Hello YouTube, this is that BMX guy. This is a video about the Black Speed Wagon set up as a touring bike. Um, it has the front right in your Filo Orange rack and the Iberia rear rack. So with just the racks, a dry weight is what I want to go for. I'm going to weigh it with this Park Tool DS1. Let's make sure it stays on and it's teared. Here is just making sure it's zeroed. Um, I never really figured out wording. It's actually easier to just lay this somewhere against something like a screen. I'm trying to get the show that. Okay, so we're gonna put the bike on here. So, you should be able to see that it's kind of at its weight. So, the bike actually weighs 26 pounds, 12 ounces, or 12 pounds, or 12 kilograms, about 13 kilograms. Or, I don't know, what, no, 12 and a half kilograms, 12.14. And it's a balanced weight, more or less, because like the rear weight will be intensified on the back end with two three pound panniers loaded up to be about 10 pound panniers. And you have 10 pounds of stuff in the front bag that goes here. So the front bag with added weight, so it, which is, if it stays on, it would this thing on but let's try to get that on there let's just lift it up get that to do it and it's about whenever it stops it's at 13.4 kilograms or 29. Twenty nine pounds, nine ounces with that front bag on there. So assume that the rear bags are about the same weight as that one, maybe they're three pounds each. That's thirty five pounds. And then maybe you add five pounds of clothes in those panniers. Or put this way, if I just use the one panier, it's gonna be three. So that's thirty two. Whatever the clothes weigh, it might be another three pounds. And I'm just generalizing the weight of clothes because usually it's summertime, not winter. So you don't have jackets, pants, like shorts, and you know lightweight summer clothes. It'd probably be another three pounds at the most. So that'd be five. So that's you know or six. So that'd be thirty-five. Plus whatever's in there, maybe another five pounds of stuff in that, like the, the stove, food, and other things. So you have 35 plus five is 40. So that's not that heavy. Now the rear rack will have a tent. The two man tent was like five pounds. Then there's ropes, sandals, and other things, and maybe even the toolkit that I use which is it's a speed sleeve toolkit that hangs off the back seat inside of it right now is just a tube for that bike because that bike uses press the valves and skinnier tubes that you normally see in the store if I did decide to do a longer tour and it's basically just me I would actually use these tires that are bigger on those rims because it's just better just to stay with the skinny rims and they don't even really come they don't even need the tire lever to take them off but they use the normal tubes that you can get at any walmart any store that sells bmx tubes so i don't have to worry about even looking for 
some really skinny size tube that goes in these tires because they're running at bike shops that even support 20 inch bike wheels because like most shops don't support 20 inch bikes in this country they kind of just say uh, they're not real bikes but anyway the other things in the toolkit will be like this tire lever a piece of the chain for the bike it might not be this chain every time but let's say the chain does decide to break I have a link for it even though I have never so far needed to ever change a chain on my bike on the road even when my bikes were heavy freestyle bikes I never really had issues with the chain breaking but I do bring the chain breaker and a piece of chain um, I bring some other allen wrenches um, six five and four being the major useful ones this is just if I had the Garmin edge on there and it has that metal mount. Um, I forget who makes it. K-Connect. It's on this thing. Well, so it's a good bro. K-Edge. They make these nice metal Garmin mounts and even a GoPro mount like that. That I can combine the two together and just mount it somewhere as I'm riding. So that's usually used for that. This is used for the GoPro to just make sure all the hand screws are tight and nothing moves around. It also has a flathead screw driver in case I need it for something. Um, looking at my bike, I'm not really sure what I really need a screwdriver for anymore than just a GoPro, but it's just nice to have it. And some people say to bring pliers for pulling stuff out of the tire, but it can usually get them out without actual tools so far um, I really do like <clears throat> the gearing easier than the 44 14 let's say 42 with a 14 instead but it's just 44 14 at the moment because the rear end has the rack on this frame we will see how it works out with the new frame now the new frame that kind of don't really want to use as a touring frame because it's it's pretty nice I mean it came out great but the, the standard 125R custom frame has a longer back end to it so if I use even that it'll make it even longer I'll make it like 15 and the chain might line up better with the 42 on this one and I can even run a bigger ring if I want to it also just might decide to be used as you know the road bike eventually because like the paint on a clear coat, clear coated frame is um very susceptible to just looking ugly underneath after a while. So once that happens, maybe it's better to go with the black paint. But I can always just repaint the yellow one. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the bike ain't too heavy. It's more balanced too because the way these bikes are the weights even it's not all the weight on just the back end like my girlfriend's bike her bike is a road bike made of all carbon fiber aluminum handlebars and stuff so the front end is so light and it has just the panniers filled with stuff it's just so hard to balance the bike leaning against things and when you take the front wheel off on it it makes it so you can't really hold on to it to get the wheel back on without flipping the bike over. Um, but this one, it's still kind of balanced when there's weight in the back. It also it feels like, well, the overall weight was what, 26 without the bag on it? Well, because there's a lot less weight to the frame itself, because this frame is only four pounds. Okay, four pounds, two ounces what I weighed that frame before. I use that frame it's going to be like three pounds 15 ounces or something and there's even less weight like that's just two ounces but if i really want to start shaving weight i can just put velocity rims on it i can do lots of stuff to save weight but there's certain things i don't want to save weight on and that's the frame the fork and the bars because 
I trust chromoly steel over other things, including in the cranks. I mean, there's a lot of people like, oh, you, your cranks are heavy. I'm like, no, they're not, they're not heavy. They're, they're hollow. They're very reliable cranks. They're meant for jumping off freaking ramps, everything. Like, they, they were for racing. They're still for racing. People still swear to buy these profile racing cranks. Guess where these profile racing cranks are made? Just where the frame is made. So there's no bullshit involved with anything on the bike, really. Everything just about on this bike is still American made, too. I wish there were like American made tires still made. I wish, you know, racks were made in America and seats. But, you know, I got the most of it on there. Right? I think the only reason why I'm not using a Paul brake set on this is because if I use the Paul brake set with, let's say, this front rack, it's going to just make it really pain in the ass to get just stay adjusted or adjust right because I'm not sure if it's going to stay adjusted with the rack kind of moving around. The rear I don't usually have an issue with, but the Avids work really good on this bike. And they work even better with that front thing holding the mount straight because then the front brake doesn't seem to squeal with that front rack on there like it does without it. Um, the bike's held up pretty good for the last two touring things. I didn't necessarily do a camping tour the last time I used it, but I definitely had the front bag on up for a lot of rides and I use the rear bag sometimes, but <clears throat> most of the time since the front bag is good for groceries. I mean, I go to the store, carry it in there, use it as a basket, and then just unload it at the checkout and load it back up and just put it back on the bike. Um, the front bag actually is very useful. Uh, the whole bike is very useful. A lot of people think that, oh, it's useless because it doesn't have gears. Oh, those wheels are too small. Oh, that bike is too small for you. Oh, uh, it isn't. It's more controllable. It's more useful. I know. If I fly off a curve on this bike, nothing's going to break. I know I'm going to stop. I, I know that it can handle me standing up on it. Because like, that's one thing about the bike Friday. You couldn't stand up on that thing. It would like feel like it's wagon or anything. Feel like, this bike doesn't feel like it's wagon. It's nice and sturdy. I mean, that's the one thing I notice is a bike being really, really flexible. These, on the other hand, are not. Um... The skinnier tires, like I said before, like I got my fatter tires in case I do do touring and I go where only basically just Walmarts are. Walmarts are everywhere in the U.S., but they're not in other countries. So if I ever start doing tours in other countries, I can. Um, I just know like these tubes are definitely unique. Most people don't support 20 inch wheels because they think, oh, they're not real bikes. So, it's hard to get these tubes. Like, you have to order them online, or... Actually, yeah, I had to order all my tubes online because nobody had them. QBP, the, the distributor, does have them. But most of the people in these shops that use QBP will not order them. I mean, they all say, oh, you can get this bike instead. It's more efficient. Okay, well, this thing's been very efficient. I don't have any issues with this bike being used as a commuter let alone a bike touring bike. I don't have a derailleur to break because it can hit the ground or just, you know, break and break the chain in the process. All because I have to have speed. Like, that's the thing, main thing. Like, people seem to think that everything's a race. And I'm not doing that. I'm not racing out there. I'm just riding at a normal pace, maybe 13 to 15 miles per hour. Some people think that, oh, you want to tour at like 20 to 25. I'm like, no, no, you can't do that with lots of weight on your bike. You start getting tired. I mean, I understand that weight is the main thing that makes a bike tiring. It's not the size of it. It's just the weight. Because when I ride this around, and then I get on the other bike that I use for my road biking, there's just no weight to this bike. This is an 18 pound bike versus a 26 pound bike without the bags and even one pound can feel different 
but eight pounds difference. You definitely feel that. So when I ride this during the week to places like ride it for deliveries and stuff like that, I get on the other bike and it feels like it's so easy to pedal and it's like nothing. I mean, people say, oh, doesn't it feel slow or you don't, how do you get that thing moving with those little wheels? Well, this is usually, I want to say it, women to say this. And I don't know who's telling these women this bullshit, but you know, it's bullshit. You're not pedaling more to get the wheel to move. See, the thing is, the wheel has less rotating weight. It has less ground spin, right? And it kind of spins twice the f speed of the other wheel to go to the same speed. Yeah, that's it. So guess what I do? I just gear the bike harder to where it's comfortable. Now, I like pedaling at 100 cadence as a steady cadence when people seem to think oh I just had to pedal at 30 cadence which really destroys your knees going slower than 70 cadence so 70 cadence is just the rpm you're pedaling your cranks but i like doing 100 cadence that's just what i like it makes me feel comfortable it makes you warm up faster it makes me feel steady at the speed it's less fatigue overall I don't have a problem with that. With 4214, it's a little bit more windy out, like you sort of get to the 100 cadence a lot faster than 4614. But that's it. At 4614, my 100 cadence might be 18 to 19 miles per hour, when on this one it's 16, 17 miles per hour if it's the 42. So the 42 versus the 44. And 46 there's not that much difference in the speed between top speed but just like I just like being able to climb a hill and not need that much force on the cranks to climb the hill that's all like the bike isn't heavy compared to mountain bikes it's kind of like lighter than most mountain bikes I don't know I don't really feel a difference in wheel spinning more when I go for a mountain bike to this. I mean, I never really feel a difference. The thing I notice is that when people have really tiny cranks on their bike, the tiny cranks feel like I can't move the stupid bike because they're so small compared to my 175s on this that it's hard to pedal, especially when they gear the bike so hard that if you do 100 cadence on a single speed bike, it's doing like 35 miles per hour because they're gearing it too hard. So I'm not sure how people don't blow their knees out on their single speed bikes more, more often. Well, anyway, this is just a video on the weight of the bike and some rants and raves, obviously. Um, I try to clean up my room a little bit, but lately we're doing this rally car crap. And I think it's probably gonna be one more race after this month. So I'm going to put that stuff away soon. I'm going to try to get... Sturmy Archer, I I have all the Sturmy Archer parts. If anyone's subscribing and wants parts for their AW hub, I got parts. I got clutches, I got everything to build a complete AW times 10. Um, if you really do want parts for your Sturmy Archer hub, maybe just message me. like. I don't know how you can message me on YouTube. It's hard to see comments, but maybe, I don't know, try to message me on Instagram. Because the Instagram channel is that BMX guy. It's pretty easy to find. But if you need parts, just like for the Sturmy Archer AW, there's parts for the S3C, there's parts for the TCW. Um, but mainly it's just. AW parts. I got pretty much everything to rebuild in AW. Um, yeah. If anyone wants wheels, I might get rid of those wheels. They're Shimano hubs laced to A23 velocity rims. But yeah, lately I'm going to try to sell things. Um, it's winter time, there's no work. 
and I'm gonna start selling stuff. Anyway, this is that BMX guy, and that was my video on the speed wagon, the black speed wagon. Set up as a touring bike and its weight, and what's on the bike. And yeah, thanks for watching.